Hi everyone! Today I'm super excited to talk about the new Blackmagic Micro Cage, uh, which I've been working on for several months now. It's finally in production, getting ready to ship. Uh, sales are obviously opening now. I wanted to go over the features of this cage uh, for you so you can decide if this is something you want to invest in, uh, if this is what's right for your camera. Um, right now you're seeing it on the original Blackmagic Micro. This has also been made to accommodate the new upcoming Micro Studio 4K G2. Now the cage itself is CNC machined out of a solid piece of 6061 grade aluminum, bead blasted and anodized black. It has a total of 70 quarter 20 mounting point holes all over it. These are threaded obviously, uh, so you can mount just about anything you want just about anywhere onto this cage. It has a total of 6 3 8 by 16 threaded holes on the top each side and the bottom. These also have the RE spacing pins around them for accessory mounts such as side handles, top handles, monitor mount, um, so that you can mount those to them without having any sort of wiggle or play. With the quarter 20s, you can add NATO rails to it, you can add other sorts of handles. Um, basically, I tried to make this as user-friendly as possible for whatever third-party other branded gear you have that you want to use to build out your camera while using this cage, um, hence all the mounting points, anything you could really ask for, and the RE style uh, mounting points as well. On the front of the cage, you'll see the name of the company, Excelsius Designs, engraved into the front. Next to that are two M4 holes. This is for mounting the Metabones adapter lock. Beyond that, you'll see two quarter 20 holes on the front surface. Now, this is pretty exciting. These are in place so that you can actually physically mount a 15 millimeter rail directly to the cage without using the rail system. Um, so if you're wanting to keep this a little bit more compact, if you're putting this on a gimbal or just really small handheld run and gun style, uh, you can put a follow focus on here. Two if you want on either side, if you're also running a zoom lens without having to really build this out too much. Obviously you can put the full rail system on this, I'll get to that in a minute, but if you're wanting to keep this small and compact, this is a great option for you. You'll also see a cutout here. Uh, this is so that once the camera's in place, you can still see the tally light. Now something that's unique about this cage is that it's a back loading design. The camera enters in from the back and the front of it is actually completely encased and protected by the cage. There's no actual part of the camera that protrudes beyond the edges of the cage. So this not only means that this cage gives you a lot of mounting possibilities, but it will also really protect this camera while in use from getting bumped. The camera simply loads in through the back, lines up with the three mounting holes, two on the bottom, one on the top, giving you full access to all your menu buttons. Still gives you access to the lens release, quick and easy, um, again, while keeping everything clear and protected. On the top surface, we have two cold shoe mounts uh, for mounting microphones or wireless microphone holders or any other accessory that uses a cold shoe mount, as well as you can see here, that 3 8 uh, RE style mounting point. Now on the right side, you'll see there's sort of a cutout here towards the back. Now this serves a purpose for both the first generation and second generation upcoming micro. For the first generation, this is cut out so that you can continue to use the uh, third party breakout boxes that a lot of people had made to give them instant access to camera settings or to run uh, DC power in or a link cable in. Each cage, if you're ordering for the first generation, will come with one of these 15 pin extenders that will essentially go into place here and raise your port height uh, to match this surface and then your breakout box will simply screw into that and uh, sit with plenty of room for this to sit in place. Now, if you're using this for the G2, you'll see that there is an M4 hole in that same position. This is for a USB-C cable lock, which was developed for this. We'll get to that in a second. On the opposite side, again, more quarter 20s. Again, that 3 8 RE style mounting point. And then finally, on the back, you'll see a, uh, another set of quarter 20 holes, again, for mounting. Uh, but also for the cheese plate that was designed for this so that once this is in place, and this is kind of cool, uh, it fully encompasses this camera. Now the cage itself is fairly lightweight. It only weighs nine and a half ounces or 270 grams, meaning that adding this to your camera won't add a whole lot of weight. Um, so it's definitely still usable with a gimbal system. And moving on to some of the accessories specifically designed for this cage, uh, as I already touched on briefly, this is a cheese plate back plate. Now, while this is in place, uh, it does fully encompass the camera, again, protecting it from any sort of damage. But beyond that, it also adds another 93 quarter 20 holes for you to continue to add even more accessories to this. For instance, this V-mount plate from Small Rig, which allows you to take a V-mount battery and just 
slide it right into place and then hold natively on here. Uh, very useful, again, if you're building this up for a more stripped down run and gun type camera system and you need a lot of battery life, or even if you're mounting this somewhere in your studio, there are also 57 M4 holes on the back. So if you're using accessories that require slightly smaller screw sizes, those are there. As you can see, while this is in place, there's no room for you to put the onboard battery on. So what I did to allow us a little bit more room here is I built these risers that simply go into place which will scoot this back a little bit. Now these risers were made to be able to stack, so you can make them essentially as, as long as you need to give you as much space as you want. And they also on the top end line up with the grooves on the back cheese plate so that they kind of are easier to install and you don't have to worry about them slipping or sliding around. They'll kind of sit right into place where they need to during installation. So with longer screws that are provided, run those on down, tighten them. As you can see there, you've now got a nice bit of space of separation here. So you can install the onboard battery in place without a whole lot of hassle and without having to remove this plate. And now, as you can see, you've got it in there. You've still got your back mounting point. You've still got everything nice and protected. Now, if you're using the G2, for instance, and you don't want this battery in place, you've still also got space that you could mount your SSD behind the back plate as well. Again, keeping it protected and in place. Now, something else I wanna mention about this back cheese plate, you can actually mount this to a 15 millimeter rail mount and then use this with your 15 millimeter rails. Now, this 15 millimeter rail mount is a pretty universal part. I'm not personally producing this one yet. They can be had out there just about anywhere for around 15 bucks. Essentially, you just set this on the bottom here, run in a couple of screws, and now you've got a cheese plate with all these mounting points that will mount right to a 15 millimeter rail system. Now I'm going to talk for a minute about the SSD holder. Uh, currently what you're seeing right now is just the 3D printed prototype. However, this will be uh, machined out of aluminum as well. Now this has been designed to use with the Samsung T9, which was just released, as well as the T7 Shield. Both of those I know are very popular SSDs when recording. Now this, I wanted to add a little bit of universality to it. Let's say you bought this for this system, but you're using the uh, Blackmagic 4K or the 6K and also recording to SSDs. Um, this has been made so that it lines up with just about any uh, whole pattern of other cages of top handles and whatnot, horizontal or vertical. The SSD drive slides right into place and is tightened and clamped down here. The uh, USB cable will go in through the front and is also tightened and clamped down. You can use either these socket nuts and have it sit flush and give you a little bit of extra room. They will require though an Allen wrench to remove this, or you can use the included thumb wing nuts to sort of give you quicker access to installing or removing your drive. However, it will cost you a little bit of space if you are trying to hide this a little bit better. You can mount this to the cage just about anywhere. If you want it on the top, if you want it on the sides, or if you're using the back plate. As you can see, it's a nice flush fit. It's out of the way of all your stuff if you're putting it on the back, so you can still put in your side handles, top handle. Now I will have USB-C cables available that will screw directly to the body of the G2. It's been designed in a way that allows you to use those type of cables. However, sometimes these drives are a little bit picky and they want you to use the proprietary cables. I wanted you to still be able to use those, but keep them safe and protected, but also more importantly, keep the ports on the camera protected. So with the G2, there is a USB-C lock that you can use to lock that cable into place on the cage so that it does not damage the ports of the camera. Then you take your cable, pop it into place. You're gonna to wanna to come in through the front. As you can see right here, there is a small hole and you wanna run that on down. And once that's locked into place, finish tightening up the lock itself to the cage. Locks to your drive, clamps into place, locks in, and now you've got no worries about the cable coming out from either your SSD or your camera or doing any damage to the port on your camera. Next, this is the locking body cap for Micro Four Thirds. This is also machined out of metal, uh, aluminum anodized red. Um, and as you heard there, it locks right into place and will not come off unless you depress the lens release button and it comes out. Next, I wanna talk about the Metabones uh, Speed Booster Adapter Lock or pretty much any other Metabones adapter. This will allow you to lock the adapter to the cage, which is important for two reasons. One, it takes a lot of strain off of the uh, mount of the camera if you're putting a bigger, heavier lens on there with the use of an adapter, but also it removes a secondary point of connection. So this is quick and easy to install. Affix this to the speed booster and leave it a little bit loose until it's fully mounted to the system. Put the speed booster into place. 
and then press this right down and it'll see, you can see it lines up right with the holes on the cage itself. Then you throw on a couple more M4 screws. As you can see, our speed booster is mounted to the front and there's nothing that can take that off. Even if you depress the mount, it's, it's locked into place. Next, the 15 millimeter rail mount. This has been made with a little bit of universality to it with the longer spacing on the holes on the bottom. Uh, however, I've added a, a removable screw here that will line up and sort of serve as a keyway with a hole here on the bottom of the cage. And so that will give you proper instant alignment for this. And that will ensure that your rails are centered where they need to be with your lens once you have this installed. Now, as you can see, this elevates the camera quite a bit above the 15 millimeter rails. And this is very important because the actual height of the body of this camera means that the lens actually sits fairly low in relation to the body. And if you're using sort of a, a bit more of a universal style 15 millimeter rail mount, and those rails are too close to the bottom of the camera, then some of your larger accessories, larger follow focuses, your map box, things like that, they're not going to fit in underneath a larger lens, and they're also possibly not gonna line up with the placement of that lens. A lot of map boxes have a slight variance of height elevation. This raises the camera up to a point where all of that stuff will line up. Something else that I've designed for this is a universal adapter lock that is used when paired with the 15 millimeter rail mount. Now, obviously if you're using the Metabones one, it's specific, it'll lock to the body of the cage. However, if you're using something like a PL mount, this will not be able to mount directly to the cage itself. It will need sort of an extra support here with this leg. If you decide you want to use a wide variety of adapters, you can just get this universal lock uh, along with the 15 millimeter rails. You can then mount your Metabones adapter to this or just about any other adapter that's on the market. So once you install your adapter, you then put your universal one back into place. The key to a lot of this stuff is you leave things a little bit loose until everything is fully lined up before doing the final tightening of everything. And we now have our PL mount adapter locked securely into place onto the 15 millimeter rail mount of this system. Now this is again very important to take a lot of that strain off of the lens mount uh, and then also add, add a bit of security so you don't risk the adapter disconnecting from the camera and damaging your lens while in operation. And with that, you know, we finished building this out a little bit just so I can show you here because as I mentioned, this back plate now can slide right onto our 15 millimeter rails and now you've essentially got the start of your cinema build. You can put your V-mount battery on here, still leaving plenty of room for your monitors, uh, handles if that's what you're using, um, get your lens set up, bring out your rails, put your map box on, put your follow focus on. No matter how big or how small you want to build it out, whether it is a full cinema style rig with all the accessories you need to use this in a full cinematic capacity, or if you want it stripped down for more run and gun street style shooting, or if you want to use it mounted to, let's say a car, or even just mounting it in your studio, but still giving you a lot of additional mounting points and points of protection. All of that is in place, uh, whether you're buying just the cage or the full system itself, to really get the most out of the Blackmagic Micros, whether it's the original ones or the upcoming G2. Thanks so much. If you have any questions whatsoever about this, uh, please feel free to let me know. You can contact me through contact.xlcsdesigns at gmail.com. Um, thank you so much, and uh, I hope you enjoy the micro cinema camera camera cage system.